Hello and good afternoon, CSI 158, Section 841 and 847 students at Anne Arundel Community College for the second eight-week term for the Cisco Networking Academy Routing and Switching Essentials course for the spring 2014 semester. Today's Packet Tracer tutorial is going to be on Packet Tracer Activity 6.2.2.4, where we're going to be configuring IPv4 static and default routes. As you can see, we have our addressing table here. Our objectives are going to be to examine the network and evaluate the need for static routing, configure static and default routes, and verify connectivity. So we're provided with a little bit of background here, and it says evaluate the network or examine the network and evaluate the need for static routing. So looking at the topology diagram, how many networks are there in total? So we've got three networks here, but we also have two networks in between these two routers on the WAN link. So you could say three technically five. It says how many networks are directly connected to router one and that would be two, the WAN link as well as the uh, LAN, wing, LAN link. Router two has three and router three has two. So how many static routes are required by each router to reach networks that are not directly connected? So you're going to need a static route for each network that you're trying to reach. So test connectivity to the R2 and R3 LANs by pinging PC2 and PC3 from PC1. So let's pull PC1 up. And let's test our connectivity here. So if I try to ping, and let me roll back up a little bit. If I try to ping PC2, which is 172.31.0.254, you can see we're getting a destination host, un host unreachable which is different than the message that you'll get where you're receiving a timeout and then finally there we get that request timed out. Alright, so now let's try to ping PC3 172.31.1.190 and we're also going to see that the destination host is unreachable. So we do not have connectivity right now between these two hosts or between PC1 and PC2 or PC1 and PC3. So we've already tested why were you unsuccessful? Because there are no routes off of these low off of this local LAN that's going to take us onto these remote networks. Alright, so part two, configure some static and default routes. So configure recursive static routes on R1. So a recursive static route is a route that specifies an IP address. And remember, this is only when Ceph or Cisco Express forwarding is not in play or not um, not active on the router. So in a recursive static route is a route that points to an IP address. However, when the route matches and points to the IP, the router then needs to do a second recursive lookup to try to determine how do I get to that network? Out which interface am I going to need to go? All right, so configure a recursive static route to every network not directly connected to router 1. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and pull up router 1 here. See if I can shrink this just a little bit here. Alright. So we're in user exec mode. We'll go to privilege exec and then to global config. And again, let's read this one more time configure a recursive static route to every network not directly connected to router 1. So if we take a look here we can see that this is a directly connected network, right? This is a directly connected network but these networks here 1, 2, and 3, those networks are not. So let's go ahead and we'll put in our recursive route. So first we'll take the top one which would be PC2's LAN. So we'll do 172.31.0.0 and this is going to be 255, 255, 255.0 slash 24. And we want to make it recursive so we want to provide the interface IP address that's going to be the next hop off of router 1 and it would be this network here 
and it's going to be this interface right here on router 2. That's going to be our next hop. So router 1 is 194, router 2 on that interface is 193. So let's go ahead and plug in 172.31.1.193. Now if I do a question mark, you'll notice we can do the the distance metric for this route, but we're not doing that during this exercise. That may come up later. Okay. So we've got that IP route statement, so we know how to get to the PC2 LAN, right? And let me slide over here a little bit. Now we're going to configure a static route, recursive static route for the PC3 LAN. So IP route 172.31.1.128, and this is a slash 26. So 255, 255, 255, and then if it was a slash 24, it would be a zero slash 25 would be 128 and slash 26 is going to be 192 and again the way that we arrive at that is the leftmost bit in the last octet has a value of 128 the second bit to the left uh, or the second leftmost bit has a value of 64 and 128 and 64 is 192 all right and so then again we want to make sure this is a recursive static route so we'll do 172 we're going to provide the IP address for the router 2 interface as the next hop so 172.31.1.193 all right and as you can see here our completion was at 10 now it's at 20 so it looks like we're gonna have six total routes we're gonna commit IP route and now we're gonna go ahead and put in the third route and actually let me drag over here real quick to make sure that they're gonna ask for that Right, so including the WAN link between R2 and R3. So we're going to include that network link as well. So IP route 172.31.1.196, and that's a slash 30, so 255, 255, 255, 252. And once again, we're going to use the next hop address of router 2. And if you look down here, you can see your completion percentage should jump to 30 and we've just added that route in there and there we go okay so router one we look really good and let me go ahead and type in we're gonna do a write mem to save our config and if I do a show run whoops if I do a show run you can see there are our three recursive routes and again the key here is that Ceph is not enabled if I scroll back up here Ceph is not enabled and we're using IP addresses to clear or to uh, indicate the next hop. And so then the router is going to have to do a second recursive lookup to say, okay, now out which interface do I go to get to that IP? And that's why it's recursive. All right, so let's close down router one. So we just finished part two. Now it says test connectivity to the R2 LAN and ping the IP addresses of P2 and P or PC2 and PC3. So I'll pull this down here. So we'll do PC2. And let's see if anything works here. No, still not working. So now request timeout indicates that the ping attempt was actually successful in getting out of the router and it knew where to go, which is different than destination host unreachable. Destination host unreachable indicates that the router does not know how to get to that host. There's no route. So here we have a route, but the request is timed out, indicating that the ping of the ICMP packets are exiting the router interface and going to the next hop, but they can't make it back, or they're not making it back. And then let's go ahead and ping PC3. And when we ping PC3 here, we would expect to have the same output, same results as when we ping PC2. The router knows how to get to the next hop on its way to that network for PC3. However, we're receiving request timeout because the ICMP responses are not making it back. They're making it out, the request is making it out, but the response is not making it back. All right, so let's close this down. 
So step two, why are you unsuccessful? So we already touched on that, and now it says configure directly attached static routes on R2. So how does a directly attached static route differ from a recursive static route? So configure a directly attached static route from R2 to every network not directly connected. So R2 will have one static route for the PC1 LAN. It will have a second static route for the PC3 LAN. And so then to address this question, a directly attached static route differs from a recursive static route because a directly attached static route will indicate the interface out which that route can be reached or that that network can be reached whereas a recursive static route is indicating an IP address or signifying that this is the IP address that I'm going to use for my next hop whereas the directly attached static route is actually going to provide the interface and so then by providing the interface I'm looking for a directly connected or directly attached static route so I know out which interface I need to go, therefore there is no need for a recursive lookup. Okay, and so let's go ahead and do the directly connected static routes for router 2. And I can slide over here. And let's take a look at this interface here. So we'd, we'd go out serial 000 to get the PC1 and serial 001 to get to PC3. All right, so let's hop on to router two here, and we'll go from user exec into privilege exec, and then into global config, and we'll add in our routes. So to get to 172.31.1.0, 255, 255, 255, 128, I'm gonna go out serial 000, right? So we've added that route in, and as you expect, you can see that that's correct. Our completion percentage went from 30 to 40. And so now to get to 172.31.1.128, which is a slash 26, whoops, which will be 192, we're going to go out serial 001. Oh, whoops, I apologize. Meant to do 192 there. All right. And our completion percentage should bump to 50 here shortly. Oh, I, looks like I've got the wrong interface in there. There we go. And so we're going to do a no for that one there. Okay. Apologize there. I got a little mixed up on the keyboard. And so here, just to summarize, so here are the two routes that were needed. So the first route, 172, to get to 172.31.10, we're going to go out the serial 00 interface. Again, that's to get the PC1 right on we'll say the PC1 LAN and then to get to 172.31.1.128 we're gonna go out serial 001 and so these are the two directly attached static routes and so the difference here is I'm indicating the interface out which I'm going to exit this router to get to the desired network and again this is different from a recursive lookup because there's no IP address here as the next hop. It's the actual directly connected physical interface. So you do not need to do a second lookup to figure out which interface am I trying to exit. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll type the in, oops, type the in command here, control shift six, and we'll save our configuration just for completeness. All right, so configure a default route on R3. And it says, how does a default route differ from a regular static route? And so a default route is going to match all traffic that is trying to exit the LAN. So anything on the PC3 LAN that is trying to go to a remote network is going to be matched by this default static or the default route that we're going to create. And so let's go ahead and do that right now. We'll pull up router three. All right, from user exec into privilege exec, and we'll go into global config mode. So again, the default route is the all zeros, right? So we're saying to get to any network that's not specifically matched, how are we going to do that? And so router three says to do it for every network not directly connected to make sure that it's reachable. And we're going to go ahead and provide 
the interface. Let me see which interface this is here. So we'll provide the interface for that default static route. So serial 001. And let's see if our completion percentage bumps up to 60. And it does. All right. So we've provided a static, or I should say, we've provided a default route using a directly attached interface, right? And so there's no recursion here because this default route knows if I, or the router will know based off the default route, if it receives packets that are destined to networks that are not local to it, that they're going to go out serial 001. All right, so let me end this and let me write memory and we'll save our configuration. So now let's take a look and let's see what our connectivity to PC2 looks like, and it's working fantastic, right? Because now the traffic knows how to get to PC2, which it did initially when we entered the routing information, the static, recursive static routes on router one. Let me slide this over here. So when we entered the static recursive routes here, pointing how to get out to these other networks that are out here, specifically this network here, this network here, and this network here, the ICMP packets were no longer destination unreachable. They were time out because they were able to exit this local network, but then they would time out because they wouldn't know how to get back because we had not entered in the routing information on router two and router three. Now that we've added that information in, PC1 can successfully ping PC2. And let me go ahead and try to ping PC3, which I believe is 172.31.1.190. And there we go. Right, so it had to ARP. And now that information, or that, that ping is actually working because the routing information is out there. Okay, once again, this has been Packet Tracer Tutorial 6.2.2.4, where we've been able to configure uh, static recursive routes. We've been able to configure directly attached static routes, and we've actually configured default routes as well. Okay, I hope you find this video tutorial helpful and I will see you all this week.